Today I want to talk about some useful tips on how I learn Chinese. Just for the record, I've been learning Mandarin for about two years now. I'm obviously still in the process. I always try to learn and improve. There are some tricks that I use along the way that looking back are probably the reason that, you know, kept me interested in Chinese even though it was pretty hard in the beginning. So, about my language history, when I first started to learn Chinese, all of the other languages that I was speaking were pretty dominant. I speak uh, German and Turkish as mother languages. I started to learn English from a very young age. These languages were like pretty dominant. So when I started learning Chinese, at the age of 19, I had quite a few difficulties since there was no like, similar language or language pattern which I was using. As I said, it was pretty hard, but I tried to learn from the mistakes that the language learners around me were making. <laughs> tip is probably, I think it is also the most important one, don't start learning Chinese by learning the characters. I fully acknowledge that the characters are a big part of um, the Chinese culture and they're really crucial for the history, but if you come from a similar language history like me where you don't know a language that is like quite built up on the character system like Chinese is, it might be best to stick to pinyin first. So. What is Pinyin? Pinyin is the official romanization of the simplified Chinese language and it is provided by the People's Republic of China. And you know what? Like, Pinyin is awesome. It is such a rewarding romanization and it includes all of the tones as well as the right way to pronounce all of the characters and all of the words. It is therefore incredibly helpful when it comes to learning how to pronounce the characters which in Chinese are called Hanzi, by the way. It might also be interesting to know that since Chinese doesn't really have an alphabet, Pinyin really helps, gives your brain the chance that you have like another system that you can stick on and that you can start with first so the brain has something that is actually familiar with what you have already known whereas the characters might feel really foreign and unknown first. Don't underestimate Pinyin. I know the characters are important, and they're really fascinating and interesting, and you will have a lot of opportunities in the future if you keep learning Chinese to like learn to write the characters and to recognize the characters. But just imagine the frustration that comes from learning to write every single stroke. <laughs> is rather than simply learning words and vocabs, try to learn words or sentences that will help you to strike a conversation, words and sentences that help you to be able to say what you actually want to say. When I think about language learning in school, I really always remember having to learn like these odd words, which I was first of all not particularly interested in and second of all, which wouldn't help me to be able to talk to an actual native speaker and it will always be really frustrating for me. Learning small sentences to help upward a daily conversation is uplifting and rewarding. It obviously applies to other languages too, like it's not only Chinese. It makes you feel so much closer to the language and so much closer to the people that are like actually natively speaking it. I realized for myself that once I started to learn a few daily sentences, my interest in learning Chinese actually increased. Once I got to China, um, I wanted to be able to talk to vendors or people that I would meet. I, was always feeling like very rewarded and uplifted when I was able to talk to them and just say a few words and they would like understand the words that I was saying even though Chinese is like such a difficult language. Also having the ability to say what I wanted to say or ask for what I wanted to ask for gave me a deep sense of satisfaction actually and gratitude for what I had achieved already in my language learning process. <laughs> tip would be be aware of the language that is used in your textbook. Especially if you're learning a language that is very contrasting to the languages that you can already speak or to the languages that you're normally used to be around. For me, when I first started learning Mandarin, uh, there were plenty of good textbook options that were like written in German and they were also pretty helpful. But once my 
language level started to increase, I also started to find it like increasingly difficult to find good literature and or good textbooks in German that would help me to study Chinese. So eventually I just switched to English ones. Of course, like there is a much broader variety of English textbooks that can help you to learn other languages. So something that you might keep in mind would also be to improve your English first. Like if you want to learn a language that's very far from the language pattern that you're used to, maybe try to level up your English a little bit so you will like actually understand what is going on in the textbooks because if you don't understand then you will like first have to like search for oh okay this this word in English I don't know what it means and obviously then you also don't know what it means in the language that you're trying to learn so be aware of that. Also I always had the feeling that when I studied with the help of English resources there was kind of like a positive learning bond in my brain and what I mean by that is that English is not my native language, obviously, so when I started to learn English, I actually intentionally learned it. Like in school, I actually intentionally tried to learn it. And then when I started to intentionally learn Chinese, I felt like there was like a positive learning bond between my brain, like between the English that I once intentionally had learned and the Chinese which I was like intentionally trying to learn now. I also had the feeling that my English improved quite a lot. <laughs> Try to get lessons or try to get taught by a non-native speaking teacher. I have made the experience that a non-native speaking teacher understands the struggles of non-native speaking students better. When you don't understand something or you don't know why you like constantly are caught up on the same mistake in the language, why you always like make the same mistake when you try to say a certain sentence or a certain something, it might be because the language pairing that you're coming from is very different or like does it another way. So I think that a non-native speaking teacher in that sense can understand you better. But it's not a must. I also had plenty of really really good experiences with native speaking teachers, especially when it came to Chinese. So it's all up to you really if you like trust a native speaking teacher more because obviously it's their native language but also something to keep in mind is if they're a native speaker then they never intentionally learned the language that they are trying to teach. I mean they obviously learned how to teach it to people that are non-native speakers. Sometimes there are like certain gaps that can't be closed between native and non-natives. Non-native speaking teachers sometimes can overlook these gaps and be aware of these gaps a lot more than a native speaking teacher. The last tip that I actually have, try to learn implicitly. You know, sometimes you just don't feel like studying. The day has been really hard. I'm doing this in my free time. I actually don't want to do this right now. A really, really good opportunity, which the internet also gives right now, is to try to learn it by implicit learning. Listen to the songs or, listen, or watch dramas or movies that are coming from that origin of that nation, of that language. But you will also like get caught up on the culture a little bit more. And listen, some of us might be sitting at home right now and we have nothing to do these days. So I want to share some of my favorite Chinese movies, <laughs> dramas and songs with you. And I also have some artists. So my all-time favorite Chinese movie is actually Our Times. I think it is a Taiwanese high school movie. I remember I was studying Chinese and the Chinese lesson we actually tried to learn and sing the title track, which is called A Little Happiness by He Be Tian. Also, A Love So Beautiful is a great drama. You can also watch it on Netflix right now. And the title track is also pretty nice. It's called I Like You So Much You'll Know It. Actually really helpful to learn body part because she says like, I like your eyes and your eyebrows and your face and you, I like you so much you'll know it. Third drama, which I can really recommend, which is also pretty underrated in my opinion, a drama called With You. It's from mainland China actually. I can recommend it a lot. It also has a lot of really nice soundtracks. Also, what is really nice about like most of the Chinese movies and dramas actually is that because Chinese is a language that has tones, the pronunciation is quite difficult. Chinese people themselves, sometimes they don't really pay that much attention to how they speak the tones and how they pronounce everything. So 
just for the record there is always like a Chinese subtitle going on which is also like incredibly helpful when you are watching the drama you are hearing what they're saying you can read what they're saying and then you can also have your own subtitles in English or in like your native language however you want it I've had several occasions where I was like watching a drama and then I saw like a sentence of few words that I wanted to learn and I just picked up my notebook and I just wrote down what they just said so it helps you to understand how the language would be spoken in daily conversations or in the daily life in China. There are a few songs that I can recommend that I've been listening to the past few days actually. When the Wind Blows by Yuna. I listen to it a lot. I, I think I first started to listen to it in 2018 and I still listen to this day. I, it's really calming and really nice. Actually most of the Chinese songs are pretty calming. Another song that I also have really been enjoying lately is SSFW. It's by Taiwan who's originally also a Korean-speaking artist. These songs are both really nice and I've been listening to them a lot. Artists that I can recommend are actually Dean Ting. I found him on Apple Music when I first went to China and um, I really liked him since then. Another artist that I really like is Jay Chou and Jay Chou is really, really popular in China. Another artist that I really like is ASI, ASI or AC. She has a few really nice songs. The last artist that I can really recommend is Aaron Walk. He's been doing music for a long time and I first got to know his music when I went to one of his concerts in China by chance. My favorite song from him is Duany I Am One and it's also pretty old but people still listen to it and it's like a really relevant part of the culture still. All of the dramas and songs that, and artists that I mentioned will also be in the, in the box down below. I know that language learning can get quite hard, especially when you're learning a difficult language, when you're learning a language like Chinese or a language that is like pretty far from the language patterns you already know. I think it is always very important to keep in mind that like no one is born fluent, not even native Chinese speakers are born fluent. If nothing in a sentence makes sense, that is totally okay. I know Chinese can feel pretty overwhelming at first. Do one step after the other and it will be okay. I hope these tips can can be useful for you guys. I try to incorporate some tips that I haven't heard from like other resources on the internet yet. Yeah, stay healthy, stay safe, and see you next time. Bye bye.